I owe everything to Burn the Floor. Burn the Floor came way before Strictly and Dancing with the Stars. I can't even tell you how grateful. <sighs> Like a flower, <laughs> I've become a woman. People come and go, but the show keeps evolving. It keeps getting better and better. And if you stay part of it, if you stay on that bus, you never know where it's going to take you. Coming back to Burn the Floor, like the, there's always a magic about it, and you know it's going to be relentless. You don't really realise how much they're putting into it, the work they put into it, and how talented they are until you're actually involved in it. You're always a Burn the Floor member. Do you know what I mean? No matter what you move on to. Burn the Floor um, absolutely catapulted my career. Those dancers, the audience had disappeared. They were in the moment. They were there. It quite literally is relevant in every single day of my life because I think I'm here because of it. Hi, I'm Kim Johnson. Many of you may know me from Dancing with the Stars USA, where I've partnered people like Jerry Springer, Joey Fatone, David Hasselhoff, David Arquette, Donny Osmond. And now I'm a judge on Dancing with the Stars Australia. Well, I grew up in Sydney and I started dancing at the age of three, doing ballet, jazz and tap. Then I discovered ballroom dancing and I started competing throughout the world. I am so happy to see dance now more popular than ever. A lot of people don't know though that many of us who are known to you through TV shows like Dancing with the Stars had a unique and unrivaled training and education that is unsurpassed through the dance world. It's a place that gave me my ticket to the world. It taught me everything I needed to know to be the best I can be, to be better than I could imagine to be strong enough and confident enough to take on anything. This is the story of the toughest and most elite dance company in the world. A dance company that many of the stars of today have been a part of. It's the toughest to get in, the toughest to be in, and the toughest to get out of. This is the story of Burn the Floor. really starts at Elton John's 50th birthday party. Harley Metcalf had been invited as a guest after working with Elton John for many years. It was a night of nights and the who's who of the music world was there. The, a room full of incredible people, absolutely packed with incredible people. And it, it, turned, it, it turned into from a party to this enormous production. Elton the visionary had ballroom dancing as the entertainment. Um, and we're all standing there in the most ridiculous fancy dress outfits. Out come 16 young, electrifying kids and stops this room dead. But it, there was an excitement in, in the room at the time and, and Harley turned to me and said, and he always called me JR, I said, oh, JR, I think there's a show in this. Ballroom dancing, you, you're kidding me. The deadest thing you could find in 1997, blew this room away. He needed to find someone who he could work with side by side to make this show work for the long haul. He didn't have to look too far when he found world champions Jason Gilkerson and Peter Roby. Then the facts came saying, you, you have to be a part of the show. And it was like, well, we've missed the boat there because we're, we've actually stopped dancing. So a bit too late for us. I heard about this couple, Gilkerson Roby in Australia, and the way it was described to me, when they dance, they move you. They move you to tears. They're incredible. And everyone's saying, you know, you, so I tried and I didn't hear back. I heard the story later that Jason tore up my facts. 
The reason we had retired from dancing was because I wanted to find something, or the both of us wanted to find something that was going to take ballroom dancing in a different direction. The passion was still dancing, so we were getting everything we wanted. It was just a very fortunate life transition. 17 years later, a new generation of extraordinary dancers have been found. It's their time to start their Burn the Floor journey. Kia, there's something big coming for you. The following year, Burn the Floor came, and I didn't want to watch Burn the Floor. Like, I didn't want to, like, because I was defending my 11th title in South Africa. Four or five times I went to my coach in Italy and I was saying, like, I want to go and do Burn the Floor, please. Let me, let me give it, I want to go and do Burn the Floor. And he's like, no, just keep on going. Through. And he convinced me to stay. First number, <laughs> it took my heart. I was like, well, I see myself in the corner going around and doing that. So immediately when I went home, I emailed Peter. I love the performance side of everything more than, I know it's weird, but more than the competitive side. I just love performing and then when I saw it, I saw it with my brother in it, I've seen it loads of times. It's just like, I even get emotional watching it because they just have so much fun, you can see it. And it's, they just have so much fun without, I don't know, worrying about all the competition side. They just love it and they just have so much fun and so much energy and I, that's what I want to do. My audition was an hour and I only had to spend like 10 minutes with it. But then I was like, wait, is that... <laughs> I'm good or is it like, uh, go home, go home, no, go home. My brother was actually on Burn the Floor in 2009. Burn the Floor is such a well-known company throughout the world. I met someone, another Latin dancer, who said, I would love to dance with you. Move to LA, I'll teach you. So I was learning and teaching all on the same like, day. So I was learning faster than normal. And then sent in a video and Pita said, you look like a great, you know, I can work on. So the day I did, you know, choose Burn the Floor as my prize, I think even Jason, I think, was still kind of like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? However, I watched this show in 2008. I was completely blown away. I have never seen anything like it. And for a dancer, that is a dream. To be in something so raw, so, like, involved in the dance industry, the emotion of dance, why you do dance, that is Burn the Floor. Harley, Jason, Peter and Nick are so committed and passionate for Burn the Floor to be known as the best dance company in the world. My is a blackout zone at the beginning. Um, for the, for the, we worked out that we can still do the dominoes. Yeah. So, what does it take? The demand on your body, on your brain, for something like Burn the Floor. You can't just, you can't ever turn up and go on autopilot. Jason demands perfection and then some. Lean, fall, step, over, through, so. It was one of those things that I, when I watched the show, I was like, how am I going to even get on that stage with all those dancers? You don't really realise how much they're putting into it, the work they put into it, and how talented they are until you're actually involved in it. And I think that kind of, I let that get the best of me the first time I'd done the show. After the first week, dancers were getting fired. They were getting sent back home. And we were like, oh my god, you know, they're actually sending people home, they're flying them over, and then they sent them back because they're not cutting it. I guess that was probably the reason why I was, why I left after the first tour. I say left like it was my choice. My body, after the first week of tour, I never knew pain. I never knew pain like that. We'd rub deep heat as moisturiser on our bodies <laughs> before the show, just to get rid of the, you know, just to get rid of the pain. And so for the first two numbers, we'd all, you know, my legs would be burning. In this, I knew I was going into a theatre show and it had to be precise. And I knew that it was going to be hard work. And boy, it was. The show is two hours long and it's non stop for two hours. You know, you, you're never not on, you know, mm -hmm. even when you're backstage, <laughs> there's something going on. It was hard. It was the toughest time I've ever been through. I've seen some great dancers come into the company um, and not stay for very long, it, like it just didn't seem to fit. Enjoyed it so much, but it was so hard, you know, it was gruelling. It was a two hour show where you hardly ever stopped, you know, if you, and if you had stopped you were changing. The standard has to be high, I mean, if you, if you want a show, if you want a good show, I mean, you're going to have to have good people there. Never worked as hard in my life <laughs> as when I came in to burn the floor, in terms of the number of hours of 
rehearsal that we do. Not just setting up a show, but while a show is running. This is the ultimate ballroom show in the world, and we need to go out and prove it every single night. I think in the beginning, we were trying to create, or trying to show to the general public what we were about. You know, I didn't want to see the falseness and, 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 and the way ballroom dancing was really removed and lacked personality. You can't smile in competition dancing. It's like, you're kidding me. And so I think there was a blatantness about the way we used to try and put it across. So we would want the dancers to show how cool they were and how athletic and physical and, and incredible they were. It's very much, if you're a rocker, I want you to go and turn it up another 10%. And I think you take away that stigma and that reputation of ballroom dancing being a, a grandparent-driven thing. I was this angry little rock chick. I had an attitude and a, a bit of a chip on my shoulder. So why was I trying to be this thing that I'm not? Whatever character I was on stage, that wasn't fake. That was, some, that was me, that was something in me, you know. I didn't have to act. It just, it was just natural, it just came. It was Burn the Floor that really brought out my character, uh, allowed you to be who you wanted to be. And over a period of about six months to a year, I really started to come out of my shell, be the dancer that I wanted to be, have the freedom to do what I wanted to do. It wasn't traditional. I was a better dancer and a happier person. I had a way to express myself creatively as the real me, not just shut it off and be someone else. But Burn the Floor in itself, they try to to bring those, to bring your strength forward. They don't want you to hide what you are. People have a certain spark about them and a certain sort of, like I say, rebellious nature about them that just wants to push the boundaries and wants to keep pushing. It doesn't matter how much rehearsal we have to do. It's all about finding that magic and finding the art and experiencing things with all the other dancers on stage every night. Finding the best dancers in the world isn't as easy as it sounds. Everyone wants to be a part of it. Perform, do what I love, and get paid for it. I got a call from Burn the Floor one day, and I literally just jumped out of my seat. I'd already seen the original Burn the Floor, um, and uh, loved it. Just the phone call to the audition for the show was a massive deal for me. I spent a lot of time actually watching the, the video of Burn the Floor, the very original, and I loved that show. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And to be asked to be part of that show... I was like, yeah, I want to... There's no way I could say no. Jason saw me and we'd have lessons and he'd always ask, he goes, I want you to be in my show. I, I was blown away from the moment that I saw that first DVD, you know, it was the dancing, the, pa you, the passion that the dancers had, the, the choreography, the music. It was just so, so nice to see it on a non-competitive level, to see that kind of dancing in a raw, artistic form. Everything else sort of, I didn't, it didn't sing to me as much as Ballroom did. There was something about those 10 dances, those 10 different rhythms, those 10 different feelings and styles that I just got so addicted to and I couldn't get enough. I signed up for a three months tour and ended up staying like, I think, 10 on my first tour. You know, you're bouncing this energy off each other on stage and you're having like the best time 
of your life. Addictive, actually. That's, that's a good word to describe it. Being committed to dance is a tough life. Only those that have the mental and physical capacity to work with the toughest of programs make it. To be a great dancer, many sacrifices are made. I lived up on top of a KFC shop. Um, <laughs> I lived in several different places, but yeah, up on top of a KFC shop with this um, Indian family, and it was absolute squalor. You learn how to be on all the time, because you know, naturally you can be on at all times. So it, it trains your discipline. You know, because uh, every night, you know, you're in a different mood. Maybe something hurts or you don't want to really do it because it's been three months. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, people came to watch you and they have, and they see it for the first time. And it needs to be like the first time. It took an incredible amount of discipline um, and, and strength to be able to get through six years of Burn the Floor and love and passion for what you do. Um, I loved every day when I got out onto that stage. You need to be in good physical shape, you need to eat well, you need to look after your body. There were times when I'd woken up in the morning and I just thought, I cannot do this today. But as soon as that red curtain goes up, you know that you're about to perform in the best show in the world and you just do it day upon day. And I mean, I did nine years worth. That was a lot of shows. <laughs> Dancers have to be so disciplined and Great actors have to be so disciplined. These dancers are used to working individually before, so maybe self-driving, but now they've got to work as a team player as well. And um, uh, what comes with that is a lot of discipline that might not be built in. And I think they know coming into the show that, you know, you hear Burn the Floors, the best experience, but one of the toughest experiences you'll ever have on stage. It's like, the most intense two-hour workout you will ever have. And I mean, that's, that's when you get to the point of performing. Before that, we've got warm-up and, I mean, you just, you leave every bit of energy on that stage. And so I think, obviously, to get a show like that, you have to rehearse incredible amount of hours to get the discipline up to be able to perform at that level. Yeah, you know, the body hurts. You do eight shows a week, and our show is a very, very demanding, high-energy show and I've got lots of injuries, I've had a ton of injuries, but you just, the show goes on and I haven't missed one show in eight years. You know, I had my shoulder dislocated in the blindfold number, so it happened while I had the blindfold on, and you just keep going. Like, I think about it now, it's just crazy. You're not good enough at it. You either complain and cry about it and you, and you stop trying, you know what I mean? Or you push on and you make sure you, you get good enough at it. It is tough, like, you have to work hard, you have to gym, you have to eat healthy. It was definitely um, a discipline thing, like even going to other jobs, there's no coming late to a job. There's, you know, we're always 20 minutes early, stretched, ready to go. We're, and that's a burn the floor thing. Touring's really tough. Touring is a dancer where, you, where your body hurts every day. Not many people can do that and stay strong and go to bed early so you're healthy and, and rehearse in the afternoon. Harley set out to create a home for dance and bring it to a world audience. And then to Broadway. But what makes the show unique? Here are some thoughts from the people that run the theatres on the West End and Broadway. It was just extraordinary. I hadn't seen that level of energy, of technical skill, of um, gymnastic ability on stage and that intensity ever before. There's a lot of dance shows. Burn the Floor, which I didn't realize until I got involved, is a dance company. And it can be, to me, it can be compared to 
at the Joffrey Ballet, American Ballet Theater, they fern as a company. Not, they're not ballet, of course, but they they um, they do their warm ups together. They do their cool downs together. It's it functions as a co dance company, and Burn the Floor is that company, and it's not any one person in that company. I don't know what Jason, Harley, Peter do with them, but the commitment that those dancers have to what they're doing and the whole philosophy of Burn the Floor is just so extraordinary. They're such pros. They're just total professional. And I don't, I don't think that that has to do with the ballroom work ethic, I think, and the, and the language of, ball, of a ballroom dancer. They're used to comp competing, they're used to traveling, they're used to being tired, they're used to, and they still know they have to perform when they, when they get out there. And it's ama they're amazing. To be successful on Broadway required a rigor and discipline never seen before. Eight shows a week for 40 weeks. But realistically, we put eight weeks on sale. Can we do these eight weeks? And then can we do 16? We played 193 shows. We established our brand. It was the most incredible run, you know, and I wouldn't miss it for the world, but I think it physically nearly killed me. The moment to, uh, to actually be on Broadway, I guess that was the most, uh, I don't know, frightening <laughs> thing I've ever done. Um, there's so much pressure, but it's very re rewarding at the same time. Broadway was probably the pinnacle <clears throat> of my career with Burn the Floor. New York's an inspirational place, first off. I mean, you stand on Schubert Way, surrounded by these historical theatres. The booth, the music box, the Schubert, they're all within touching distance. If that doesn't get you going, you try walking on the stage. <laughs> it's something that I dreamt of since I was a young boy, to star in a show, and a show that I'm so proud of, and a show that I've been so proud to be part of. It's a weird being here, seeing this. You know, like you're looking at the actual set. We just had obviously the Black Marley, and our steps with the percussions. It's, it's weird seeing a different show in the same theater. Oh my God, goosebumps. <laughs> it's a beautiful theater. And then of course, there is Japan. Japan is <laughs> insane. Japan, I love Japan. It's my ultimate. The audiences in Japan love this show. The first time that I actually just went, I can't believe I'm in this show, and that was Japan. At the end of the show, we had this section where we would all go out and dance in the audience and then come back up. Well, I got mobbed. It was crazy. All of a sudden, people treat you like rock stars. The fans there are just crazy. They love us. They absolutely love us. They had sticks with our faces on them, and they would just hold them up. We got there on these tour buses and they would chase us down the street wanting us to sign autographs. They love it so much and it, it just takes you to another level. It, it, they almost give you like this sort of superhuman strength when you're on stage <laughs> because they're just going so nuts. Our first number was we came through the audience and that was it. We knew if this is going to happen, it's going to happen. If not, it's going to go down. The first thing we walked through the audience was like, wow. People like were up <laughs> screaming. A bomb just went off. People were just like, nuts. I, I get a good nuts. They gave everything to the dancers. Everything. From the moment the lights went down. The crowds that turn up, it's like a rock concert. And I just remember we were on this huge stage. I think it was five, six thousand people in the audience. It was something crazy. And they were going nuts, like we were rock stars. You definitely felt like a rock star and all the hard work that you put in is paid off like within the first second the curtain opens. That was so exciting and it opened my eyes to um, what it could be like to be famous, you know. Pop stars and rock stars or whatever are going to get that kind of reaction. 
um, but they're giving that reaction to to dance, and which is brilliant. That's in, it's incredible for us as dancers. Harley, Jason, Peter, and Nick meet to plan the Japan tour and discuss the future. No stone is unturned to get the show absolutely perfect. The burn the floor structure is really interesting because in any given day, the four principals really who are sharing the vision and making the decisions are in different parts of the world. So it's it's hard. We you know maybe twice a year we're all together in the one room. I think it's the way to go in, in setting the stage up from day. Once you fly these walls up and you're done. Yep. You know, in and out. In a minute. Yes. It's good to you know flying oh. it's it's easy and lighting's even easier as well. Yeah. What's good about it too is when we had the LED, we could use really strong wind machines because they just don't move. <laughs> you know, so we could get. It's about communication. It's about and letting everyone else know what you're doing and sharing your thoughts, good thoughts or bad. You need to share them. Burn the Floor demands the very best show for its audience. Harley Medcalf has had many years of experience working with people like Frank Sinatra, Elton John, Lionel Richie, Billy Joel, and many more. His attention to detail and high standards have been critical in making shows work. They have no downtime. So every little detail in the planning to make their lives easier is important to the end product on stage. Well, I, I think detail is important to everything. Um, I, if, you, if you want to do a job and you want to do it well, then you've got to do every aspect of it. And, and if you're lazy about parts of it, then it means that things don't properly happen. My stickler to detail is probably, probably pretty horrendous in as much as things aren't good enough. Maybe I've inherited that from Peter and myself trying to be world champions. I expect the, the show to be a world champion too. You, you, know, you watch the show and, and they'll nail it, but Pete's not happy and, and uh, it'll get better the next time. The main part is getting it right every time, eight times a week. And by the time when your body's dead and doesn't like it gives up, you still get it right. That's when you know you've got it. For me, the dance is divided into separate categories, whether it's technique, characterization, musicality, presentation. There's several categories that I look at, but sometimes it's just my expectation of the person or the couple as well. Following a review of the shows around the world, Charlie Hull, the musical director, makes some very important changes. We have got a monstrous lot of songs. We've got to go through all of the old songs, and two of them are in different languages, which makes it very difficult. One's in Brazilian Portuguese, which is a horror, and the other is in uh, Italian. Isn't it? Fonzo works with Charlie to get the music right for the next tour. The sound of the percussion is probably what makes the show different than anything else because the percussion being live and being on stage, it's very loud. Like if you were to put it onto a record, the, the percussion would be over the top, but it's not like that live. It gives it so much excitement. You can still hear everything, but the percussion is like, wow. Rehearsal days are long and arduous. New routines are complex and require concentration to get them right. Jason is a tough taskmaster. He Five, demands six, nothing seven, but the best ten. from the best. However brilliant the dancers are, they are pushed to their limit and beyond.
Norwegian lines are setting the standard for entertainment on the ocean. I oversee the global operations for entertainment. That means I'm responsible for all theatrical productions. I'm responsible for cruise programming. Those are the fun people around the ship. Our youth programs, um, our entertainment technicians, the broadcast, all television and broadcast, all branding, all licensing, and that's where Burn the Floor comes in. Burn the Floor now plays to over 8,000 people a week on two ships sailing out of the USA, one from New York and one from Miami. A third ship is now being planned. She is about 163,000 tons. Um, she sails with capacity. We can get anywhere from 4,500 up to 5,000 individuals, our guests on board the ship. Her crew is about 1,600. And I was brought to the company to change entertainment. There was always this perception of what entertainment is on board a cruise ship. My background is not cruise entertainment. I'd worked at another cruise line, but that other cruise line brought me from New York and Broadway. Unlike theatre, when you're touring around, you know, um, you do your show, the, um, the, the, the audience, they disappear, you don't see them again. Here on stage, you, they, they, they perform and, you know, they can dress up and they, and they go out and they mix with their audience. Um, and they do it really well. And I think it's, it's a great breeding opportunity for, for the cast. I saw the Broadway show, I was blown away by the Broadway show. I came back and told my people, my team, and I said, we've got to look into this. The focus what Jason has always done with the cast is bring the audience in to you. So there's the breaking of the fourth wall, you know, which is what we're portraying out to the audience. We don't do that much. Do not look into the audience unless it's really necessary. Every single moment you're on stage, there has to be a reason for what you do. And, um, and, the, and the secret is really draw the audience, draw the audience in. It's, it's just been a brilliant partnership ever since. I mean, the entire team from Harley and you know Nick and Peta, and then the dancers. It's just been we we could not be happier. They are the most talented individuals. Um, they blow our audiences away every single night. I mean. Um, literally when you, the, the audience is screaming at the, at the end of the show on their feet, going crazy. Peter prepares the dancers for the launch of their new ship in Miami. The schedule is brutal. Warm-ups and rehearsals take place every day. Lessons from the show the day before are discussed and changes are made. The cruise ships have given us an opportunity. And the theatres on those ships are incredible. They've given us great facilities, great opportunities, and we're experimenting again. We're trying flamenco or tap or contemporary, getting that mixture into the show. When we were originally told that Burn the Floor was going to be on a ship, we all weren't sure what it was going to be like. We didn't know if it was going to be perceived as the cheesy shows on that are on most ships. Coming on the cruise, I'm going to places I've never thought I'd be able to go to. Like, the islands are incredible. I'm so grateful for the places we tour to. We've got to be honest, there's days where you really feel like, how am I going to get through this show? and the energy that's created on stage just gets you through. Like, as soon as the curtain goes up, all that goes away. Every day I'll go running, I'll go lift some weights, and uh, actually, it doesn't matter how much I run in the day, by the time the show comes, I'm exhausted by the end of it. It's always give it your 100%, so it's a very exhausting show. We always make sure that we dance at our best, and so the other couples obviously can see that. So we all try and give as much as everyone else, because if someone's not, in the way are not giving as much, it's not really fair. And it's very challenging to produce out here on the ships, it just is. There's no space backstage, but that doesn't mean we have to do second rate. The standard of the show is the most important part for us. We always want to deliver a high quality show um, anywhere we are in the world. On the ship, on the getaway, on the breakaway, on land, wherever we are, it's, it's the quality of the show that is important. So. If there is an issue or a problem, it's fine.
finding a solution and solving it. That's number one on the list. This is this is cool. Like I, I like this. I like this. Not like individual people like doing their own things and stuff like. That. Sometimes it's really interesting being backstage in the dressing room and um, I'm just calling you, you know the different cultures. Is, is good and it's actually quite fun sometimes. We each yeah. bring a different flavour and a different energy to the company. You know what your body needs to keep you going and what to avoid. Um, so you just pick your moments really and you know what works for you. Everyone's different as well. So you just got to stay true to what you know. Um, weight training, uh, kettlebell training, um, running, cycling. It's a physical show. Um, and some nights we were rehearsing until one in the morning. Um, but because we're also dedicated to the show being the best that it can be, we, we don't even question it or we don't doubt it, you know what I mean? We just get on with it and do it. But things never stand still. Dance is now the hottest thing in entertainment and Burn the Floor needs to keep moving forward. At a recent meeting, Burn the Floor began to look at introducing tap into their show for the very first time. All right, let's go with music. The latest Burn the Floor recruit, world dance sport champion Joanne Clifton, has her very first taste of a Burn the Floor rehearsal. Well, it's weird anyway because I've been used to like people telling me exactly how I've got to dress, exactly what hair colour I've got to have, exactly how I've got to do my makeup, my nails, everything. And then I, I emailed Jason and I was like, for Burn the Floor, what do I, should I get extensions or what colour do I, should I have my hair and stuff like that? And he's like, whatever makes you feel as though you can dance, you know, as best as you can. And I'm, yeah, I'm not used to that at all, so just tell me we're going to have it bland. <laughs> if you can come up with eight bars of straightforward tango just on the spot something that just have a bit of a play just do some something I'll come back to you we'll put this together I've got an hour to on do this spot. later but some yeah something that you think we could do that straight away yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so <do I>. some <laughs> It's just like a mutual work really because she has so much knowledge in ballroom at such a high level. Apart from lifts. Yeah. Apart from lifts. So we are just doing that. everything that was in the routine and every single thing that it's like purely ballroom steps, we just, I just try to fit what she does with really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here I just feel like I'm let out of the cage, and it's really, really fun. Burn the Floor provided a place for great dancers to be themselves. It was a place that became and still is family for many people. There, there are connections there that last a lifetime. You don't go through the things that we went through. You don't grow together like that and then just walk away. You know, we're family forever. You know, you go out there and you sweat together and, and if someone gets hurt, you cry together and, and you support each other. And um, I always felt safe with everyone in the company as a friend. I found my home. And I remember thinking that, I remember calling home and telling my mum and dad that this is it, this is what I want to do. 
I want to do burn the floor forever. <laughs> I never want to get old and I want to do burn the floor forever. I just, oh, I, I, I think the best thing I can say is I found my home. It was just such a genuine and amazing cast to be with. It required us to be completely dedicated to our technique, to the show, to one another. Matthew Cutler danced in Burn the Floor in 1999. After the very first show, he came off stage and, and said to the company, it's like we all won the competition. And because and, and, going back just a month before, they're all dancing against each other. I've devoted my life for about eight years in this company. This is my family. It is the family, I guess. It really is. Yeah, even if you're not in it anymore, like... We still, we know what you're doing. You we could, know where you are. Yeah, and we all, everyone still talks to each other. Yeah. But I always felt safe here, you know, in this family. Peter, she was always there for me. Whatever happens, your family, we fight. It's like the same, you know, that all these things are going on. Like family, you know? Um, for me, Ben the Floor is my family. Like, if I have a problem, I talk to Peter, I talk to Santo, my best friends, I talk to everyone. I found my husband here. So I've just recently got married to the drummer. We were on stage rehearsing, and in walks this Miss Slovenia. <laughs> we started calling her at that time, because it was like... And she walked in, and that was, that was it. It was all over for me. <laughs> Not for me. I, I would always classify myself as a Burn the Floor family. I've made some amazing friends. You know, Jason, my best friend, he would he'd always call me his girl. And Pete, was, she was my mother. Like, you know, when I'd have a breakdown or needed a hug, she was always there. And so from having them like this, you know, on this pedestal and, you know, now seeing them and just hugging them, you know, like their family, it's just how life can evolve like that. It's crazy. I actually was able to go see it on Broadway. And what I thought was amazing, besides the dance, dancing was amazing, choreography was amazing, they were really into it. I, some of the best, I mean, really great dancing. But I went backstage after the show and I took a picture with the whole cast and you, you could tell it was a family. There was many more friends that you could make. It was more family orientated and you had to work as a big group to produce this show and to make it spectacular every single night. Once you do burn the floor, it becomes your family. So it doesn't really matter how much time is going by. You know, we all kind of check in with each other. So they do become your family. If you were to sum up burn the floor in one word, and I, f I feel like it would be family. I always feel like it's, come, it's like coming home for Christmas. And it was really a love fest. It really was. I think you could pick any of a number of dancers who've lived the journey. That is, starting in Burn the Floor as a 17, 18 year old kid and staying with us for seven, eight, nine, ten years. And suddenly, you're not a teenager, you've missed it, you're a grown up. Harley, Jason, Peter have made me the woman I am today. You know, they've brought me up from a little girl to, and, and I've grown, I've, you know, like a flower. <laughs> I've become, I've become a woman in front of their eyes and I owe everything to them. I think one of the best things I ever did on the first tour when we created our touring credentials, you look at something, you know, access all areas, on stage, I put family. I wanted to define what Burn the Floor represented. It didn't represent stage access or backstage access. If you were part of us, you were family. And so I had family, and if you were a visitor, I didn't have VIP, I had friends. And that set it up right from the beginning. You were family or friend. All of the dancers that have ever come through the show, they've all had, they've all become part of that Burn the Floor family, which it's unheard of in any theatre show, any dance show, anywhere around the world. All you hear is, I can't believe how close you are as a company. It's absolutely unbelievable. It quite literally is relevant in every single day of my life because I think I'm here because of it.
coming back to burn the floor like there, there's always a magic about it and you know it's going to be relentless and you know it's going to be tough and sometimes you'll be back in it thinking why do I punish myself like this if it all adds up to six years I mean there were six of the greatest years of my life the choreographies change every single year you know people come and go but the show keeps evolving it keeps getting better and better and if you stay a part of it if you stay on that bus you never know where it's going to take you it's it's really changes both I can't even tell you how grateful. <laughs> Great. Um, how grateful we are for, you know, for the opportunity that they have given us. I think that if I didn't have Burn the Floor, I'm not sure I'd still be here. I think Burn the Floor um, absolutely catapulted my career and uh, made me the dancer that I am today. I, I knew that the producers of Dancing with the Stars were in the audience some nights and they offered me a contract straight away afterwards. I didn't even have to audition. If you are in the performing industry, Burn the Floor is, is the integral thing that they look for, you know, in, mm. in, because it, it guarantees a standard of dancing and a quality of, of character. It was all stemming from that one number that the producer, um, John Leahy, from Dancing with the Stars called me when Kim left in 2004 to join Dancing with Stars, I, was like, I felt like, you're kidding me. And then it started a few more when Natalie went to London. Slowly, this gradual migra migration, and, and I used to fight it. I used to fight with Dancing with Stars because they didn't respect us at all. I actually phoned Jason the other day and I said, have me back <laughs> because I miss it. Burn the Floor came way before Strictly and Dancing with the Stars. It was Burn the Floor that's actually set the mark for this and Harley should be so proud of himself and we thank him from the bottom of our hearts because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be where we are today. The future looks exciting and bright. More plans for China, Japan, more ships, theme parks, TV, and then a return to the lights of Broadway. The future of the Burn the Floor story looks set to be as exciting as the past. Watch this, watch this, here we go. You rolling, go, go. We, we had to stop just for a second because there was a helicopter outside rolling by. So now you know, what. if anybody hears that, they know what it is.
for Harley, Jason, Peter and Nick? The answer is... Shit. The answer is... <laughs> sorry. Why call for the floor, actually? Oh. Yeah, otherwise... We call for the floor. Saying that after Saturday. <laughs> <laughs>